Hello, welcome back to a new video. So recently I've been playing the brand new DLC for Cyberpunk, Phantom Liberty. And as an avid fan of Cyberpunk 2077, I knew I just had to play this expansion pack. Unfortunately, so far it's been kind of disappointing, bland, boring, and lacking in luster. So if you're expecting this DLC to dramatically change the core gameplay mechanics of Cyberpunk 2077, then you'll be sorely disappointed. Although the DLC does introduce some new gameplay mechanics and a revamp of the skill tree, the game mostly remains the same as the original offering. As someone who put over 150 hours into the original Cyberpunk 2077, I'm kind of burnt out with what the game currently has to offer, even with the new DLC. So after you've installed Phantom Liberty and load into your game, you can either start a new game or just continue from where you left off. Last time I played this game was end of 2022, before I finished the game I had one save and I loaded that save point and I got a phone call telling me to go to Dogtown, which is where the DLC will be taking place. Dogtown is a really ugly, destroyed, slummy kind kind of looking place with destroyed buildings and it just looks kind of run down. In comparison to Night City, which is a very beautiful city with neon lights and very futuristic cyberpunk vibes, I didn't really enjoy being in Dogtown for the most part because it just looks so ugly and dull and boring. So I'm not really a big fan of the setting of the new DLC, I prefer being in Night City, but it was nice that they added on a new part of the city, I guess. So the beginning intro of Phantom Liberty is a very long, slow, laborious and tedious process where you're basically running through wreckages and scaffolding and trying to get your way to the checkpoints where it just tells you to go to this place and then just basically sprint towards it whilst taking out any enemies on the way. Your task is to look for the president whose aeroplane or spaceship just crashed into the ground after being shot down and you have to help her and escort her and keep her safe. Basically it involves just running to checkpoints whilst you make sure she's following behind you and there's a lot of talking there's a lot of standing around in elevators just waiting for the elevator to go up or down whilst you stand there having a bit of chit chat either with Johnny and his wise ass little remarks which kind of get old and very annoying very quickly. The core gameplay mechanics of the main story in Phantom Liberty basically is the same as what you would expect from Cyberpunk. Go to the objective, go into this room or this outpost or this building and then look around for the other objectives either using your scanning ability or talking to someone or killing an enemy and stealing whatever key card or loot he has to progress to the next checkpoint and this gets kind of tedious when you have to enter a room and basically just scan everything this is not fun gameplay i don't know why cd projects red thinks that us gamers want to stand around scanning things and just like analyzing objects and get information about random objects in a room it's not fun it's not entertaining i'd rather not do it and then eventually you are finally introduced to the new main star of the show, Idris Elba, a British actor who's been in quite a lot of really big films. Seems like he has been recruited to join Keanu Reeves in this game to be the next main star in the game. And I mean, he looks okay, I guess. He looks like Idris Elba and everything, but they gave him an American accent. And no offense to his American accent skills, they're okay. But sometimes I do hear the British accent slightly slipping out and it is slightly immersion breaking. I think it would have been better if they just let him speak with a British accent and maybe he's like I don't know a British agent from Britain who came to America to do some espionaging but anyway the American accent does seem or sound kind of jarring but apart from that his performance in the game is pretty good and what you'd expect from an actor of his tier grade so the main core of the story in this game is basically the president woman is hiding out in some wrecked building and you've got Idris Elba to help you out do missions and try and find out who's trying to assassinate her and try and keep her safe and try and find a solution to these problems. And that's where the main core and meat of the gameplay of Phantom Liberty comes into play. You'll have a bunch of different quest lines and side quests that will take you all around Dogtown, that amazingly destroyed looking slummy rubbish area which looks nowhere near as good or fun to explore as Night City. So I hope you're looking forward to doing the same old things you were doing in Cyberpunk 2077 such as sitting in a car, watching the character just talk to himself or talk to you whilst you sit there in the passenger seat not really doing anything. Seems like Project CD Red didn't really listen to the player's feedback when everyone was complaining saying it's boring to sit here in the passenger seat at least let us drive. Like in GTA, there's similar missions in GTA where you're driving and the side character is in there with you as a passenger and he's talking to you. But at least in GTA, they let you drive the bloody car. In this game, you got to sit there just staring at his face. As for the combat of the game, it basically feels pretty much the same as the original game, but there are a few new things. Thanks to the revamped skill tree, there are a few new extra perks that you can unlock by putting skill points into it. That does make the gameplay feel a little bit freshened up, but apart from that, it's mostly just the same old stuff. For example, I got this perk that highlights a little diamond on the enemy, and if I aim at it, it will reveal 
a weak point on the enemy where if I continue shooting into it, it will charge up like a, an electric pulse explosion and just kill them in one shot, which is pretty cool. And there's many other new features such as you can now double tap F to jump out of a movie, moving car or you could slide out of the moving car. And there's also weapons added to the cars and vehicles, which is kind of okay, I guess, but I don't really care that much because I'm not really into combat in a vehicle. I'd rather just get down on my foot and shoot enemies with my gun or my weapons. And I feel like they've kind of missed an opportunity here where they could have added a really in-depth car customization gameplay feature. I really feel like they could have taken some inspiration from Starfield's ship building mechanics where you can build your own ship and add guns onto it wherever you want. I think it would have been really cool if you can customize a car and like change or upgrade the parts, uh, the engine, the exhaust, the tires, the spoiler, stuff like that, bulletproof windows maybe, and also add weapons to the car or the vehicle and have like a massive list and a huge variety of different weapons that you can place anywhere on the car, like on the sides, on the top, maybe you have like quad shotguns on the roof of the car it would have been really cool if you could modify the vehicles in this game to that extent take it to a garage and like modify everything or maybe even build your own custom car and choose from a list of engine parts and exhaust and body chassis as of right now all i can see is there's some kind of police van that has rocket launchers and there's some machine guns on one of the cars and i guess that's okay and everything it's a bit of a gimmicky thing it's fun for a few minutes like Driving some of the vehicles in Halo was kind of fun for a bit, but then you'd rather just get out and walk around on foot and use your weapons, like I said before. So the skill tree in the game has completely been revamped, as you can see. It's now like a tree system, whereas before, it didn't have these lines connecting to each other. Before, it's just like a load of different random skills, and you can just put your points and click on them in any order you want to. Now you've kind of got an order you've got to follow, so you begin at the bottom and then you branch off into different things. For example, reflexes, you start off with one of these new skills where you can do like a dashing thing and there's also different movement things and skills and also in technical ability you've got things like gearhead, you've got increased health for your vehicles, increased damage on your vehicle mounted weapons. This one's new, this one's pretty cool, it's called Car Hacker. You can unlock vehicle quick hacks, allowing you to remotely take control, self alarms or even blow them up. And at the end of the tree you got some pretty cool new perks such as finisher moves for the melee weapons. This one's pretty cool with blunt weapons, you've got like a finishing attack that destroys the enemies. But the problem with these skill trees is that it kind of suffers the same problem from the original game whereas a lot of these things you put your points into just add incremental percentage modifiers to your ability such as minus 25% recoil whilst aiming, minus plus 20% effective range and accuracy, plus 15% weapon swap speed, minus 30% bullet spread. It's just kind of boring because it's just like plus 20% this, minus 10% that and it doesn't really feel like it really dramatically changes the gameplay for your playstyle in a huge way. You also have these relic skills, for example, you've got this one where you get 100% crit chance, 25% armor penetration, weak spot damage bonuses, or you could go for emergency cloaking and have more of a stealth build with the relic skills, or have like a mantis blade skill upgrade thing. So it's nice they upgraded the talent trees, the skill trees, and you can really specialize into your own kind of playstyle. And there's probably quite a lot of different builds you can play around creating for yourself. But really, it doesn't really feel that massively different from the previous skill tree. It's just it looks different with the different connecting branches. And there's a few new perks that they've added, but they've also removed some of the fun perks that are in the original game. So it's kind of annoying you have to pay £25 for this DLC. I feel like they should have just given it to us for free. I don't really feel like this DLC adds a massively huge amount of new content for it to be worth the price tag. I mean, really, this should have been part of the original game when it first released. If this was part of the original game, then the game wouldn't have had such a negative feedback when it first came out. And it took, what, two, three years now to finally get to this point. So if you're really like a hardcore fan of this game and you're really stuck with it for all these years, then I feel like us hardcore fans, we should be given this free DLC as like a reward for staying true to the game instead of just ditching it like most people did because the game was really glitchy and kind of rubbish and bad when it first came out and it took over a year until the game actually became good. So those are my thoughts on the Cyberpunk 2077 DLC Phantom Liberty. I think it's okay and I'll probably get around to playing it eventually but right now I'm too busy on Starfield which I feel like Starfield is superior to Cyberpunk 2077 in almost every single way. Starfield is very similar to Cyberpunk you could say but I just find Starfield to be a lot more interesting and a lot more engaging and more of an in-depth RPG shooter kind of game.